Alright, hello everyone. Today we're going to be talking about the academic history section of FarmCast. So this is a section that takes some time to complete, but with some preparation we can make the process as easy as possible. One of the things that can be really helpful is for you to have a copy of all of the academic transcripts from all of the college classes that you've ever taken available to you um, as you complete this section. And if you've taken the PCAT or if you've taken the TOEFL, having those test scores available for you as well. So let's get started. So the academic history section can be found over here in that second quadrant. There's four different sections. You're going to be entering in the high schools you attended, all of the colleges you've attended, including any, cl any classes that you might have taken um, as dual credit courses in high school. You will be entering in all of the courses that you've ever taken from your transcript. So again, that's why it's important to have that information in front of you. Um, but the good news is, is that you can save this section. You can always come back to it if you have any questions or if you need a break and want to come back to it. And then the standardized test section. So first of all, let's get started with the high schools attended. So you will enter in the high school that you attended. So in this case, we're going to enter Central High School, and then you're going to enter the city in which you've attended that high school. And in the drop-down, you'll just select the state that you attended that, whether you've graduated from it or perhaps you transferred to another school. Um, click on Yes, and then you will indicate when you graduated from that high school. So we'll enter that information here. You will save it, enter it in. That's probably the easiest section that you'll be completing on your academic history. The next section is your uh, colleges section, and you will be entering in all of the information from all of the college courses that you've ever taken. If you click on this link, this is really helpful. This gives you the requirements and some helpful tips on entering in the colleges that you have attended. So I definitely recommend reviewing that before you start this section. So we're going to enter in a college. And again, as I said, it's probably a good idea for you to have your transcripts in front of you. So here is a copy of the transcript that we'll be entering from today. So as you start typing the school that you attended, you will see it will automatically populate and you can click on that particular school. And it will ask you if you have obtained a degree or if you are planning on obtaining a degree. So in this case, we're going to say no. If you click on yes, you will be able to uh, indicate which degree that you've received or which degree that you plan on receiving. You can also indicate if you were a double major. So in this case, we're going to click on no, and then we will indicate whether they use quarter, semester, or trimester. In this case, the school uses semester. And then when did you attend the colleges? And this is where you can find the information on your transcript. So we've got classes that we took from fall 2010 and spring of 2011. So you will select the semester and you'll also have to select the month of whenever you started. And then your last semester that you attended, and that was spring, ended in May of 2011. And then you can check this mark if you are still taking classes or still attending that college. Make sure that you save that and you will be entering that in for each college that you have attended. If you add additional colleges, just click on this plus button up here and you will be entering in that information. Now this is important for a couple of different reasons. One of them is that you're going to have to have your official transcript sent from the colleges that you attended. So you will need access to a printer for this section. Make sure to download the transcript request form on this page. What this does is it's going to indicate in this upper right hand corner a barcode with your ID. This is going to be sent from you to the school that you attended and lists instructions for your registrar to send your official transcript to FarmCast. When FarmCast receives this paper back with your transcripts, They'll scan this barcode in, and those courses will be automatically associated with you. This also indicates any alternative names that you might have had when you're attending that school. Again, this was from that biographical information that you completed earlier. So this information should be correct on here, and it will have instructions for the registrar. You will send this sheet, print it off, and send it to the schools that you attended. You may want to go on the school's website to find out how to request a transcript. You might be able to even print a transcript request form from their website to attach to this, and the registrar will receive it. They will submit it. There might be applicable fees. Some schools have a nominal fee that they charge for transcripts to be sent. 
So very important that you have this done and have it done pretty early so that FarmCast can begin matching up the courses that you are going to indicate with your official transcript. So going back to this page, you are now going to begin the transcript entry section. So this is the section where you're going to be entering in all of the classes that you've taken. It will list all of the colleges that you indicated that you attended, and you can begin by starting on one of those colleges. So it prompts you up here. There's like a wizard that will show you through step by step. Now down in this section, it shows which programs that you indicated that you wanted to apply to and what the prerequisites are for those various programs. If you hover over them, you can see what prerequisites they require. And so this is going to be make it a little easier for you whenever you match up your own courses with the prerequisites that are required for that particular school. So let's first start by adding the semester. And again, Looking at your transcript, we're going to start with Fall 2010, and it's going to be Biology 101 is the first course that we are going to enter. And your academic status, you're just going to select which year you were at that particular time. If you've completed it, or if you're taking it right now, or if you plan on taking it in the fall or spring semester, just indicate that in this drop-down menu. This will allow you to enter your course in. So enter it exactly as it appears on your transcript. And then the title exactly as it appears on your transcript. And then the subject, be pretty careful about this. You'll see there's a lot of different subjects listed. So the one that most closely resembles the course that you took. And then make sure that you check credit hours. So this was a four credit hour course. You'll type in a four. Then under the drop down, you can do partial credit depending upon the institution that you took the course at. And then for that one, we received an A, so we'll indicate that here. And that can either be a number, if there's a number indicated on your transcript, or a letter that's indicated on your transcript. So you'll be able to do that for every single course that you took. So let's add one more on here. We'll do our English course. That's the English composition course. And then again, find something that closely resembles that. There's no um, type of composition listed here, so we'll scroll down to English and select English. That was a three credit hour course, and then for that course we received a B. So you'll see how important it is to have that transcript in front of you so that you can reference it uh, rather than trying to rely on memory. So make sure to have copies of those for each of those courses. I'm not going to enter in any of the others just for the sake of time, but you will be entering in every single class that you've taken. And so there are instructions on here on how to do that. There is a really nice video for you to watch also on help with the transcript entry too. If you choose not to enter your courses. You can actually have a professional transcript entry service do this for you. Um, there's a link with information available for an additional fee starting at $65 where this company will actually enter your transcripts, enter all of your courses in for you. Again, if you need to change something, you can delete a course and move on. Definitely make sure to review the information for accuracy and save that information. So this is prompting me to enter other information in for other courses or other semesters. And again, the opportunity to match those with your prerequisites down here as well. So let's go to the standardized test section. So you can choose not to enter any standardized test scores if you don't have them yet, or you can add your test scores. Now this is not official. These test scores are self-reported. So you will need to have your official test scores from the PCAT if your program requires the PCAT, or the TOEFL if uh, you need to take the TOEFL. You will need to have those scores sent to FarmCast. This is just self-reported information. So you can either choose not to add it, if you do choose to add the test score, then you can enter the information. If you plan on taking it, you can click on no on the radio button and indicate when you plan on taking the test. If you have taken it, you can indicate yes, and then you'll be able to enter the information from your PCAT. So having your PCAT scores in front of you can be helpful. Um, you will have your PCAT ID number that you will enter in and of course the date so July 18th is whenever this PCAT was taken so you just simply select the date so this one's July 2016 July 18th that we will select you'll enter your PCAT CID then you will enter in your scores as they appear on your score so this is the scaled score 
and then the PRZ percentile rank score. So you will enter that information in for each of the areas on your PCAT. Your writing section is a little bit different. The score appears a bit differently and you will enter the mean in that rather than the percentile rank. So once you enter this information in, you can save the test and it will save the information for you. So if you enter this information in, you can add more standardized tests to this, um, but you can't go back and update or delete the ones that you have entered after you submit your application. So make sure that it is accurate information. Once your official PCAT scores have been sent to FarmCast, they will confirm and verify those scores. So that's how you add your standardized test scores in. So again, with the transcript entry, we want to review and finalize our transcripts. You can actually preview the transcript, you can edit it, but let's go ahead and review it. So this walks you through the process of how to do that. So again, select what your primary college is, and it's going to prompt you whether you've taken any lab courses. We can select yes, and then you'll be able to select which of those if it's a lab only or a lecture with lab. So in this case, it was a lecture with lab. You'll be able to select that for all of your courses. And did you repeat any classes? If so, it will ask you which ones you repeated. If not, just simply click on no. And if you received advanced placement credit for exams, and these will be listed on your college transcript if so. So again, you can enter yes or no and continue. And if you have any other additional tests like CLEP test or proficiency test, and that would be indicated on your transcript as well. You could indicate yes, continue and select those or no. And if any of your courses were honors, you can click on yes, continue, and then select which of those courses are your honors courses. And if you did any while you're studying abroad, again, those will be on your domestic institutions transcript. None of these were for this case. So Congratulations, your transcript entry is complete. Like I said, this will take a little while to complete it, but you can always stop and go back to the section. So continue back. And if you go back to your application, it will show that your academic history section has been completed.